Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Trading Room. My name is Anka Metcalf, and today is Monday. It is July 20th. It is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And let's begin with the economic releases for the day uh, and for the week. So uh, today uh, and, in fact, tomorrow, uh, we are not going to have any high-impact economic releases. Uh, which means that front and center, we're going to be focusing on earnings, which are going to power and to fuel um, our indices. So we do have a plethora of earnings that are coming out. And uh, they were sent to you last night in an email. You can review them as well. But uh, some of the big earnings that we had this morning before the market opened were Halliburton. Uh, we also have Lemex, and uh, we are expecting uh, at the close today, after the close, IBM to report earnings, and IBM is one of the biggest components uh, today that will report within uh, the Dow index. So therefore, we can expect some price action to, uh, to be present after the close of uh, volatility, obviously more price velocity. Uh, into the Dow after IBM reports earnings right after the close. All right, so we're, uh, let's begin our trading session today uh, with uh, a close look at the indices and potential opening locations. So uh, the Dow right now is up 13 points. The S&P is up barely one point and NASDAQ is up, well, 46 points. So we do have a huge advance in NASDAQ compared to the Dow and the mini S&P. And also Russell is uh, down uh, 2.6%, uh, 2, uh, 2 points and six ticks. Uh, and uh, it is sideways. So we can talk about a sideways uh, price action, sideways range into the Dow, the S&P and Russell. And we have price advance into NASDAQ. So right off the bat, right, uh, right into the pre-market 10 minutes before the open, we do have NASDAQ that is leading the market higher. Uh, we're having a relatively weak oil, but oil is uh, running right now and it had just tapped into support into the $40 zone. Uh, and uh, it is down about 30 cents right now. It's a little bit uh, over uh, half a percent. Uh, gold is back into our entry level, and our entry level was uh, into the 1817. It was last week, and I believe it was called last Monday. We have been sideways ever since and continues to chop into that area. We're going to discuss now each index at a time, and we're going to look at the structure. Okay, so uh, let's begin right now. Let me just uh, stop the screen share and I'm gonna start sliding uh, the one chart. So please give me a heads up in a few moments if you can see the slide that uh, will be displayed. So just give me a heads up right now. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna be got, begin today a little bit upside down than what we usually do in the trading room. And that is we're gonna begin with um, the bonds, okay? So I found it very interesting that the bonds are not uh, giving up territory. And in fact, last night, uh, in early hours, uh, seven, I, I would say seven o'clock or eight o'clock, going into nine o'clock at nine o'clock, we did have some pressure and some volume coming into uh, bonds that lifted the price higher and then they hovered into the 180 and still continuing uh, to uh, trade over the 180 area. So we do have an active trade in TLT with a swing program. And I just want to highlight that if uh, you would like to take a swing into the bonds, uh, this is definitely on the menu. Um, again, if you have a smaller trading account size, if you do uh, have uh, possibility to trade stocks um, um, on your, in your retail account, uh, then definitely TLT is going to be the cost efficient way to do it. Uh, but bonds are definitely a little bit higher in structure. So therefore, um, you know, not, it may not be suited for all the traders, but it's definitely a setup that is worth taking a look at. 
So what we're seeing here is that since we had the pop, and this is from that black swan event, the COVID-19 uh, March um, uh, drop is that into the uh, indices, we did have the bonds that screamed higher and made a high into 191. Uh, and then shortly right after that, the next day, the bonds came right into place. And you can see here that we have a support line, which is the core of the range, which is into the 178 area. Since then, so since March, the bonds have been coiling all around the structure uh, and have not really taken a decision whether uh, to continue its trajectory to the upside or a further pullback should be in play. One thing that I'm noticing here is that uh, since uh, June, end of June and the start of July, we have been uh, trying to regain the 20 SMA. And not only that, but right now we're trying to regain the 10 EMA. We have not traded above these two moving averages since uh, March 25th. You can see it right here, March 25th all the way to uh, April 6th. And then we uh, started meandering and coiling around that 180 back again. So right now we're seeing a regain of this 10 EMA, which can potentially lead to a further break to the upside. So for the trading session today, for those of you that are interested in bonds, this could be a swing breakout over 180.18. You can see that is right now it's trading below the trigger point. So this would be a daily rotation. In fact, it's more of a daily breakout, if you will. Uh, 118, uh, 18, over 118.18. So obviously your entry is going to be 118.20. Ideally, we want to see the price close above today, above that price into the 120, and that is going to stir some more velocity into this, um, into these bonds. And definitely, we can start uh, talking about uh, targets to the upside into the 181, uh, 18115. Well, first 181, 18115, 18105, and definitely over uh, the 182 and 183. So it's setting up a very nice uh, bull sandwich along with the breakout with the daily rotation. So we have three in one setups going on right here. So this is very, very, um, uh, I would say constructive for the pattern. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're gonna start a little bit upside down today. Like I said, we're gonna go last into the indices because the indices are very, very extended uh, from the overnight trading session and we currently do not have any trades in them. And I'm gonna explain exactly why. Uh, for uh, CL, you can see that CL is part of a bigger uh, image. And uh, in fact, it's part, here it is, uh, it's part of, a. Um, uh, monthly continuation. It's struggling with resistance that it had from 2019, 2018, and also from resistance from 2016 and 17. So the reason why it's uh, just meandering into the highs, and I do know it is, uh, you know, trading quite an um, impressively wide range is because uh, it's trying to dissolve that resistance. So the way I see it, the more we grind into the highs, the more we can potentially break to the upside. Uh, however, uh, I think that most of the setups that we can take a look at, and I'm gonna zoom in on the technical image here so you can understand it. And this is a weekly chart. So you can see here that last week's trading activity was actually positive. It came into a continuation pattern and we're having a very solid structure. You can see the 10 EMA right here and uh, we could definitely talk about a progression to the upside. So contingent on this uh, gold is definitely a swing. We talked about it for a very long time. Uh, in fact, we talked about it since June that uh, uh, that oil may be a swing to the upside. Uh, if we can break above the uh, uh, above these highs, so definitely last week's high is going to be uh, the forty one dollars and uh, uh, twenty seven cents. That would be uh, that would be this, this, over this high right here. So twenty five to thirty cents uh, area, forty one thirty area. I would say that would bring more confirmation to the table, uh, and then it's going to start expanding higher. As you can see on the technical chart, since we have this uh, um, 
I would say artificial drop below zero. Um, and um, it, it, it's finally starting to gain some um, structure right into the gap fill. So it has, it, it's very positive. However, the downside is that it has a very wide stop. So um, $37, and we talked about this, this is the only downside. I don't have a position in oil other than the US though that we initiated uh, a while ago into the swing program a couple of months ago. Uh, but definitely I'm seeing that, you know, the structure into the 37 is holding. So I don't have any active trades in oil. I am interested in seeing if it can break above this uh, above mentioned um, uh, air, this, uh, this mentioned area uh, for a progression higher. So I do like that as well. All right, so let's uh, continue with uh, gold. And uh, gold is uh, definitely, like I mentioned before, we do have an active uh, trade into the 1817. The weekly chart is favorable for higher. We are already trading and we have already triggered the high velocity zone and the high velocity zone is over 1792. Um, we tapped briefly into that area before the pullback. I think that this is going to be very constructive for the trading week. Uh, and we're finally, we can finally see a progression to the upside. From the daily structure, we have been forming support into the minor support area that was this peak into April. So we do have the resistance here creating support. We also have confluence from the 20 SMA and from prior price support. So we have a very nice robust structure. So we can see a breakout of this pennant, if you will, uh, and a progression higher. I'm gonna bring out the one hour chart and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the wider broad range and the very sloppy price action. And it continues to trade into these very sloppy, um, uh, very sloppy territories. They cannot be contained into tight stops. If, if you wanna take a trade in oil and if you wanna use a hard, if you wanna use a hard stop and if you're not looking at the bigger picture, uh, it, it, it's just going to stop you out. So 99% of the time, you are going to see uh, uh, the stop out occur. I only look at gold, uh, at least for the time being, for swing trading opportunities. Once it breaks and it enters into the velocity zone, into the 1929 area to 1930 area, that will open the door for day trades. But until then, and until the price closes above that zone, I am not going to look at any day trades into GC. All right, uh, the market has opened. And like I said, we're going to leave it alone for now uh, to calibrate. Remember, on Friday, we did have option expiration and uh, we are expecting uh, a little bit turbulent open and a lot more calibration that may last for about 30 minutes or more this morning. We're gonna take a look in just one second. But let's begin with the indices right now. And uh, what we have going on into the indices is number one. Uh, the Dow uh, started a little weaker. You can see that it made the, uh, it pulled back a little bit to the downside before rotating. Uh, and this came at four o'clock in the morning and rotated a little bit higher. It's into a lot, a lot of pressure. So the only high velocity zone that I see, and I would be interested in a long if it trades up of 26,600 or if that calibration, it, yeah, 26,600 and in fact, uh, into the 26,620. 26,620 would be um, a release of price that can potentially continue into this top of the range into the 26,700. It's not going to be easy because this is a chop zone right here. And it, this is nothing else but, uh, but a very, uh, let's say a, a, a range, a channel, a downward channel and the price is fighting to get back into the pattern. So until then, uh, we're going to leave it as is. Um, like I said, the two zones that I'm interested in is obviously we need to see a close, at least this one hour close into 10 o'clock. So in about 30 minutes from now, above 600. And if we should get a setup between 600 and 620 or 650, uh, then we're going to look for a potential long position in YM. Now for the daily buys, because I have not mentioned it, uh, definitely NASDAQ is into a very bullish scenario. However, YMNES, even Russell, need to prove a little bit more before 
we take any kind of decision. I like the way it is trading. NASDAQ actually went uh, daily, uh, daily, uh, just triggered the daily, uh, daily rotation. So it looks very constructive for the long sign. And in fact, it's trading into from a swing pattern from last week. So it has clearly very bullish uh, uh, aspect to it where uh, where the Dow is lagging a little bit. So the Dow, the high velocity in Dow is going to be uh, over 7. 25. So it, it still has a lot of room. This is, uh, this is the high velocity zone right here. So it needs to regain. But until then, we may find some, um, some trading opportunities into it as well. Let's move on to the mini S&P. You can see the very sideways range that we have been trading in the last uh, three trading sessions. One, two, three. This is the fourth trading session we just started. The high velocity zone in the breakout is going to come over 25. We have room to progress into the 33, and 33 is going to be the uh, possible blast off for it. It's going to be the daily high velocity. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be the weekly high velocity zone. So uh, over that uh, 32, 33, that's going to be the full bullish above. No questions asked. We're going to stay bullish. Uh, and we're going to run into higher targets. I have no doubt in my mind that we're not going to see a higher price target. One other thing that I wanted to mention is that don't forget that we're expecting the stimulus. So because we're expecting the stimulus, I'm not expecting the price to drop off the face of the earth. Uh, we're seeing the Congress, we're seeing um, uh, the Senate, we're seeing the Fed that is trying to, to, uh, uh, to help the economy. So with that being said, I don't think that we're going to see some really dramatic uh, you know, pull pullbacks into the market, at least in early this week or into this week. But nothing is set in stone. And we're definitely going to trade what we see on the technical pattern and not what we assume what we expect uh, to do. So definitely, this is the m and &E uh, We have two more indices. We have NASDAQ. They're still going through calibration. I'm just watching them right now. All right, NASDAQ hit the first chop and uh, the first resistance and notice the first resistance and chop below. This is the chop below all the way to 10,545. And we're having resistance uh, right into this spot and it's a cushion zone uh, here as well. Uh, and the pressure is coming from the 10,670. So the structure into NASDAQ, like I said, just just because it's uh, higher this morning, it was higher this morning, was leading with over 50 points to the upside, right? Right now, this is the option expiration calibration that we had from Friday, okay? So uh, basically, we tapped into this level, dot on, and we're coming back, regaining the 20th, and we're back into the chop zone, right? So chop zone is, uh, I I honestly, it's from 500 all the way to the 10,700. So it's about 200 point of total chop, but we're gonna try to work this, uh, work uh, our way through this chop and try to find some uh, trading opportunities if they should be on the menu today. Uh, remember, today it's not going to be easy. The indice is so careful when hitting the buy or the sell button. Today it's going to be a very choppy day the way it is setting up. So be very, very cautious. If I'm not gonna be taking a trade today, I don't think you should be trading, taking a trade either, but I'm not the one pushing your, um, you know, your uh, uh, mouse on the buy button or the sell button. But if I see that the market environment is choppy, I may not take a trade, take, take a trade today. And in fact, right now, we don't have anything that is conducive for a trade right off the open. Uh, a lot of times when we do experience option expiration or quadruple witching option expiration, the trades are coming later in the day, around 1030 into our prime time trigger time or even later uh, into, uh, into the day. Uh, one index left, and this is RTY, and RTY, again, pretty constructive right here, and it has the resistance into the 1480. Uh, we have presented, and I have uh, presented a swing trade idea last week, and in fact, that idea is still in play, 
And um, we have achieved the first area of resistance into the 1480. And now the support is basically holding into the 1450 zone. So if you're using support as an, uh, if you're using, uh, if you're using any stops, uh, 1450 would be the stop that you may need to use uh, to protect your trade. Uh, obviously, we have two pressure zones. This is the resistance zone, and this is moderately bullish above. You can see that we didn't have any meltdown in Russell the way we did in NASDAQ right off the open. Uh, but we do have the structure that is holding so far, and uh, it has, again, it's going to be very choppy here. I'm going to look at the structure. Um, it's holding, so the daily exactly where it is trading right now is trading into the 200 SMA. The more we close throughout the trading session uh, today, and if we try to regain and close above this 200 SMA on the daily, we may be more bullish. The high velocity zone is going to come over 1485. It is noted here onto the chart. And this is going to uh, bring you more continuation into that swing for those of you that are engaged into the setup that we've discussed and uh, last week the uh, Russell Long. That is also a weekly continuation um, and it, it, uh, it is a weekly trigger for the upside and that will dissolve the 50 SMA and the 89 SMA that we have on our weekly charts. And most likely, um, the next uh, resistance area is going to be into the 1490 right off that, and uh, 1500 uh, over 1500 to 15 1500 to 1525. Uh, that is going to be a gyration zone again. But if over that 1600 and back into the highs. Uh, all right, so let's uh, start watching some active trades right now, and uh, let's, uh, wow, some really wicky price, <laughs> some wicks, really large wicks and price action. Okay, so, all right, one question from the room, and that is the, the stop in ZB. Well, I did mention the stop, Alex, in ZB, and the stop needs to be into the 178 zone, one below 178 zone. Okay, so like I said, it is a longer, it is a swing trade, and uh, it, you need to protect a little bit more than, um, it, it, because of the structure of the chart, it's a little bit more choppy, so you need to make sure that you take a lot of precautionary measures in order to trade it. Um, from last week, you could also use, if you decide uh, to use, I'm going to give you the exact parameters, it, it, it is a long uh, ZB long 180.25, uh, that, uh, that is the entry. You can use a, a tighter stop if you wish, and that is a 178.29. Yeah, you're very welcome. You're very, very welcome. I am in TLT, so uh, I'm not interested to, uh, to the bond side uh, just yet, but definitely to, uh, uh, a one ZB is going to start pushing over that trigger price, uh, we're going to have, you know, more uh, participation into our TLT as well. So TLT for me is the, that lower risk. All right. So uh, right off the bat, right now we're uh, seeing some massive calibrations, massive, massive cal calibration that is happening. All right. Just adjusting my charts on my side. Russell, big bar to the downside. Remember, we're starting the day neutral, okay? We're not bullish and we're not bearish. We're starting the day. It is 9.43 right now and the day is neutral. We do not have any structure that tells us that throughout the trading session today, we, sh we should be bullish or bearish. Okay, we're just gonna wait for more definition. TLT as well is doing a five minute rotation for those of you that are looking for day trades. Uh, just a quick uh, screen check here. Let me know if you guys see the six charts displayed. 
Okay, thanks, Alex. Hi, Phyllis. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so we're back into the chop zone. Nothing to see here. Nothing to do. AstraZeneca is in the news. I have news that is popping on AstraZeneca um, today. Myrna, big push to the downside. Man, we nailed that trail into the 94. What a beautiful trade. Over 40%, guys. Can you believe it? Over 40% in one trade. This is unreal. <laughs> I am telling you, like, all this, uh, uh, you know, you know, that with all this COVID has created you know, very good trading opportunities. All we have to do is stay home and trade. Great trading opportunities, amazing trading opportunities. We just need to have a lot of patience uh, to wait for the opportunities. Remember, we have a setup, okay? We have a trade, we don't have a setup, we don't have a trade. We have a bias. Again, we're gonna look for a trade. We don't have a bias. Well, we're not gonna look for a trade and we're gonna let the time decide. Um, so we're seeing a very steep pullback in Russell back into a very shallow support that we had right before the open into the last couple of hours. And we're seeing more pressure into the Dow. Lots of pressure into the Dow here. Um, and uh, we're seeing back NASDAQ. NASDAQ, there was a block trade identified um, um, in, uh, in it, in uh, actually into um, the queues. And I'm going to watch it very closely because what this means is that they may want to either leg back in or they may want to start selling. We don't know for sure on which side of the tape uh, they're, they're positioned. From the daily structure, like I said, we have already triggered, um, you know, a rotation in NASDAQ to the upside. And we're trading from that bigger perspective. Let me just put the daily chart here so you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see here, so we had this wick, beautiful. Right, and I know some of you guys are into the swing. I uh, we have been talking back and forth uh, via email, um, and um, this is a very nice pin right here, contingent on holding the support into the three fifty, actually below three fifty, and it's gaining uh, gaining a higher low. So I'm looking right now at four seventy area. Okay, so it went inside and up. We have an inside candle from Friday from option expiration, right? And we went up, right? But we need a little bit more than that. So basically the parameters that we're talking about in this trade are the low, and this is for the swing, are the low, and we're still looking to regain the 700. So 700 is gonna open the door for much higher velocity to the upside, okay? So this could potentially be a swing right here. Very nice swing, by the way. Very, very nice swing. Okay. Let's see if the market calibrates. If it manages to get into that 700, 700 would be the blast for the, uh, for the swing. And we could actually put an alert for that so I can remind you when that happens. Wow, lot, what is going on? with the market market is just very impulsive this morning so very volatile very very moody um very very impulsive this morning look at the dow okay so remember that the one of the most important things that we need to have is to have the market in sync if we have the market in sync then uh we're going to see some really nice uh um opportunities for us, but so far we cannot take the NASDAQ uh, long because one, 
it has not triggered. And number two, we have divergency into all of these other indices. All right, so let's take it back to the five. See, very constructive. Five minute is very constructive when back into resistance. going through some names right now. Okay, a lot of pressure for NASDAQ where um, S&P is trying to tag along and trying to be a little bit firmer than YM. All right, there's a new trade that is posted in portfolio in RUKU in Roku. Uh, and that is for the swing stock swing program. All right, we're getting close to that 700 here. All 
I wonder if this is a fake out or a real trade here. So I'm monitoring this very closely. made it to that 690. 700 is going to be the uh, swing for it in that stock. It tapped on again into this resistance uh, it came, see, it came into this area again. See how structurally strong NASDAQ is compared to the rest of the indices, and the Dow continues to bleed. Uh, Thomas, the stop needs to be under that last uh, wig um, into the 400, 10,400. You can use 500 as well, but that would be a little bit choking it. I'm still watching it. I'm interested as well. Um, shop, very strong, popping on my radar, SHOP. That's one of the reasons why NASDAQ is on fire. Lululemon is also incredibly strong today. Lululemon is on a really nice bullish pennant here. Not in any trades right now, just uh, patience to wait for the right setup. No, Aaron, I'm seeing that. So that would be my, you know, second pick. Like the second strongest would be ES. So I'm like going back and forth. No setup yet. What I like about NASDAQ is that when it pulled back, when it pulled back here, it did this uh, inside five minute rotation and then boom, it just eliminated all that shop. And then right now it's outside of that shop zone. See, this is the chop below. Anything that trades below this area, I'm not interested in. I'm not interested in. From 600 all the way to, uh, to 700, I'm not interested into this spot at all. So remember, uh, all accounts that use um, 
all the trades that we call in the trading room can be used with micros and then can be used with full size depends on your um, account size. Well, Aaron, I would not rule that no trades for today. We're just going to have to wait and see if something sets up. Uh, definitely the fact that oil is just uh, punching in below that support. Uh, you see here that I have temporary support, shallow area. This support can be easily breached. That's why uh, I mentioned that it's shallow. Um, and uh, let's see here. Let's do a quick rundown of everything. The SMP right now is trying to strengthen a little bit. It may have the five. Michael, are you receiving uh, are you receiving the Sunday night email with all the trades? No. Have you received the login? Have you received the login for, you should have seen it. It's perhaps in your junk folder. Do you mind taking a look in your junk folder and see if you have it in there? Because if you receive this week's login, you should have definitely 100% received uh, the swing trades. No login either. Please send me an email. Okay. Have you checked your spam folder in your junk folder? Okay. Thanks so much. I appreciate it because sometimes the email lands in the junk folder or in the spam folder a lot of times lands in there. So Michael, if you don't mind, shoot us an email at info at tradeoutloud.com. And just, uh, uh, just mention uh, that you're not receiving the emails, the swing emails and the login emails. That's bizarre. S&P consolidating within the last five minutes. Uh, support is going to be 3205 to 3204. So keep that area in mind. In fact, the support is 3203. Okay, never mind because that's 3004 uh, and 05 are very choppy. So 03 becomes support and the trigger 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Thirteen and a half to fourteen would be the trigger for uh, the S and P at this moment. It is ten o three. So let's go ahead with a ten o'clock analysis. Uh, just give me a couple of more seconds here. Don't want to miss a trade if there is one. So what I'm looking for is S and P possible trade. Oh, let's see. Let's do 32.14. Let's give it a little bit more room.
here it is. Here it is, guys. 30, oops, it's 32, guys. Sorry for the typo, 32, 14. Not 31, 14, 32, 14. 32, 14 is the entry. I like NASDAQ for a swing. Parameters could be right up. Still no trigger in ES, so. Okay, over 700 and the stop is like I mentioned before, below 500. You can use micros. Okay, we're in one day trade and one swing trade right now. NQ target one is going to be into between uh, 735 and 752. That's target one. Okay, and we have just achieved target one and target two. In SMP, we still have targets into 18 and 20 in SMP, 18 and 20. We're not yet into the trail zone. Other targets, so I'm both trailing, obviously expect NASDAQ to push higher. We're looking for a 775 of ongoing, so targets will be communicated. We're in full trades right now. Aaron, see how the trades are lining up? All you have to do is wait for the pressure to come in. All right, next, uh, next target is gonna be uh, 32.19 in ES. Then we have 32.20. Financials are still weak on the day. We're having a bit of a pop in oil as well. NASDAQ was the, is with the high velocity. But let's take care of uh, the m and &E s and first, which is a day trade. Uh, as always, smaller accounts uh, can look to take uh, profits into the first uh, target zones. And of course, everybody's encouraged to take profits into targets. Um, and uh, also, uh, if you want to keep the whole entire position uh, as well, follow me along. If you have just one contract, just follow me along or one lot, or if you want to trail, even if you have like more lots uh, to your trade, just follow exactly what, how I'm trailing. This is how I'm trailing my account right now. Uh, a lot more weak weakness into YM here.
Uh, Craig, I see a question. Is NASDAQ canceled? I No, I don't know when you posted this, 1004. NASDAQ is a swing over 10,700. We mentioned it into the pre-market game plan as well. So it's at 700. 700 is the entry. If you did not get it at 700, do not get it right now. Wait for it to come back to 700. If it comes back to 700, then you can take it. All right, new level of support into the uh, M&E S&P uh, developing into the 14 to 15 zone. We need to see a print, a print over 18 in order to start the high velocity zone into the 19 and 20. So we need to see that print of 18, clear print of 18 in order to continue higher. That's 3218. We are right now trying to consolidate into the pre-market high from nine o'clock. We had a mini range. If the price is gonna start breaking above the 3218, that range will be dissolved and the price will be ready to start ascending into the 19 and 20 targets. We're going to have a next velocity target into 25 in S&P. So beyond the 20, we're gonna have another target into 25. And if we push through 25, if we push through, and in fact, 2550 is what we need. If we break over 2550, here it is. Here's the zone right here. We're going to open the door for 30 to 33. So this could also be considered as a swing alongside with NASDAQ if you decide to keep an extra lot active. So what you can do is basically if the trade starts going above 25, you could take the day trading portions and just leave a lot in for further continuation higher. That is if you want to keep it for the swing portion. And that 32, uh, that 32, 31, 50 is also going to be the monthly trigger. So that's going to be incredibly bullish, incredibly bullish. So over this area right here, it becomes really high velocities just going to be. And in fact, this is what, you know, the indices are just doing right now is they're just trying to um, break massively above. There is another way we can manage NASDAQ. If NASDAQ today is going to manage to get over 750, uh, we can bring the stops to break even. So we don't occur any losses for the swing because we need to see the momentum going. And like I said, I identified a block trade in, uh, in the queues. And that means that we could have pressure, much more pressure into, uh, into this index. So we just want to play it safe. Okay. We just want to play it safe. All right, so we had our print of 18. We had a slingshot back into the 15 zone. And we are definitely, we were two ticks away from achieving the target at 19, and that would be target three, I believe. Four, actually. We had target one at 16, 17, target two. Um, oh, target three, target three is 19 and then we have 2025. 
Once again, our area, our entry was 3114. If we see the price trade over on uh, 19, 19 and a half, uh, we're gonna bring the stop to break even, okay? And in fact, keep an eye, we're looking to make sure that we still have the momentum on our side. It's 10.15 right now, brand new candles and I am trailing right now 32, 32, 15. Let's keep a trail 32, 15 trail stop. I don't want it to look uh, to go against me. So I need to see momentum. Tra so it's one point above the break even trailing 32, 15. Okay. So bring the stop up. Uh, hey, Ta, if you want to take it off, take it off. Uh, it is. Uh, it is one of our targets. I like to keep myself in the game for a potential continuation higher. Hey, Greg. Uh, fantastic stuff. I just, I'm just keeping uh, my fingers crossed, which you guys know it's a very technical term because I want the SMP to lift. And right now we need to see a print of 19 and a half. <laughs> so keep those fingers crossed. Yeah, very technical term, but I don't want it to see it go back. We have another mini support at 32.15 and I don't want the price to go against me. So honestly, I didn't take profit, in, profit into these targets into the 16.17. Definitely when you have a smaller trading account size, you want to make sure that you chunk that profit into these target zones um before the trade goes against you remember target one is always the easiest target to achieve you have day traders uh that are pushing the market you have triggers from some very short-term swings uh or adds to the trades you know some hedge funds or etc they're looking to uh, add to their potential trades and therefore you have the and obviously the algos and then you have the participation to uh to the upside all right, we issue continuation uh, on the 15, a little bit of gyration here. Like I said, my trail stop is 32.15 right now. So it's uh, one point above the entry. Uh, NASDAQ has achieved that uh, resistance zone, as you can see right here. Uh, the target is between 7.35 and 7.52, and we already had a tap into 736. Remember for S&P to start going, this is very constructive right here. Very, very constructive. Uh, so if you do want to keep it as a swing, I'm just putting it out there. If you still want to keep it as a swing, keep the original stop. In fact, right now, we need to see it over 22. If it trades over 22, we're going to have that expansion to 25, but 20, between 20 and 22 is going to have a high pressure gyration from resistance. We have a band of resistance uh, from 28 all the way into uh, 20. So it's about eight points.
All right, these are the targets that you see here in NASDAQ. These resistance zones represent the targets. Very nice momentum so far. We're getting, we're not getting any algo participation so far. These are just traders that are definitely Legging in. We need to see right now a print of 21, 2150, 32, 2150. We see that 2150, we're going to start pushing higher. So that's the next spot that we need to break 2150. Okay, we can uh, definitely raise our stop right now, new trail stop, uh, and our new trail stop is gonna be 32.17. We're right into that resistance that I mentioned. We're also uh, trading into that 10 a.m. high in mini &E S&P. NASDAQ is far more advanced and it's pushing higher. We have two indices and that's why things are gonna be very jumpy here because we have two indices that are weaker, YM and Russell. And I'm keeping an eye on those uh, for my day trade in ES. I want to be very diligent here. We're getting a bit extended intraday. We just need to power through that 2125. We need one more point, guys. We need one more point. We achieved obviously target into 3220. I guess there's no surprise there. And I'm getting a little greedier. I want to see it over uh, over 2150. And we got it. We have the 322150. Come on. We need to see it right now. We need to see it pop over that spot. We need to see it pop over that spot. A little bit of correction uh, into the Dow and Russell, a little bit of green activity, which may be conducive for progression higher. Also take a look at NASDAQ, nice follow through, almost one tick away from that 750. We need to see it over 752 to 753 in order to stop pushing higher into the 774. And again, if you want to keep this as a day trade because it hasn't violated or revisited the stop and it has a very wide stop, you can treat it as a day trade as well. My stop is still 17 in ES. Do not let it go below 17 if it wants to revisit the 17. Right now it's trying to hook into the 10 exponential on the one minute. Let's see if we could get this going. Nice spot, nice reaction. Take a look at this, very nice reaction and constructive. Came to the 10 EMA and back higher. Okay, I can keep it on this so you can see it. You can see our bigger picture target into the 25. When it gets into the 25, we're gonna trail a little bit more diligently into the 24 area. So our trail, if we see the mini &E S&P at 25, we're gonna start trailing 24. That is gonna assure us about 10 points in this index. And definitely a scale out. We are already triggering, and this is beautiful, beautiful one hour rotation to the upside. We're gonna get more velocity here. Here we have NASDAQ over 53, beautiful. In about 30 seconds, we're gonna have a new trail in SP in 30 seconds.
four seconds, three. Now the stop is 20. The trail stop is 20. Twenty one twenty five for the low right now. Twenty one twenty five still holding. If you want to keep it for a longer duration, you can still maintain the 3218 for the stop versus the 17. All right, we need to see a pop over 23. We need to see a pop over 23. We need to see that 23 print, 2325 for a stop to hold. We're getting extended. We're a little bit divergent right here. That's why I'm protecting the 20s. If you wanna protect, you can even protect 21. 20 or 21, protect 20 or 21. 20 or 21. This is live trailing. This is the hardest part of the trade. The hardest part of the trade is how you manage the trade, not the entry, not the stop. All right, baby, that's what I'm talking about. We're almost 10 points off and in the S&P and we're doing fantastic. We have solid trail stops. This is fantastic right here. Fantastic. Officially 10 points up and in mini S&P. Officially 10 points up and in mini S&P. The new trail stop is gonna come in about three minutes, two and a half minutes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking, look at our levels, guys. Look at our levels. Beautiful, beautiful. Let, let NASDAQ go, let NASDAQ go, let it run, let it run, let it do its course, okay? No trailing in NASDAQ. Uh-oh. A little bit of divergence here. I want to see it above 24. I want to see it right now above 24. I need to see a 25 once again. 25, come on. We could take it there. And then we could have the trail into 32.24 and then we could wrap this up and take care of NASDAQ. We don't want to give profits. We don't want to give back profits. Take it here, 24. Take it here, 24. Done. Here it is, 24 again. Done. I'm done. I'm done with ES. 10 points. All right, let's go back to NASDAQ. If you want to maintain the swing, you can maintain the swing. If not, if you want to take it as a day trade, and I do want to take some massive profits right here, I just want to leave one little lot in for NASDAQ. Um, 750 NASDAQ, trail 750 NASDAQ. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. I am done with the yes. It's red into resistance, okay, here. Uh, it can potentially start, you know, going higher, but it has heavy divergency, okay? So it can potentially run into 30, 31, 32. Craig, you're rocking it. 
er awesome evar awesome let's make money guys let me hear that ka-ching 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 francis you're done for the day love it love it who said you need to trade all day to make money okay let me know amy you're rocking it okay how many guys did you make in es or nasdaq francis I just want to see you, Francis, like increase that account, like get, get all of these, pull those big fat checks out. Awesome. Craig, are you still in NASDAQ? And give me your entry price. 750 should be the trail. Awesome, Mike. Good job. Awesome, awesome, awesome. NASDAQ, 60 point. Look at this, guys. Look at, look at your results. You guys are awesome. You guys did it, you pushed the buttons. Okay, so trail stop guys, trail stop in NASDAQ is gonna be 750. You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna take everything in NASDAQ at 750. Kind of, here's why, it's right into the 7075 and we can expect pullbacks here and the pullback can be back into the 700. I don't wanna give that back. So I'm gonna kill the swing and trail 750. Francis, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna kill the swing and NASDAQ, I'm not gonna wait for the swing. NASDAQ trail on all 750. Let's keep it simple. And then if we see any other pullbacks, you know, we can take it again, but it's into a lot of resistance right here. If 750 is going to hold, hey, I'm fine. I'm fine. Let's see. I mean, 50 points in NASDAQ, that is freaking phenomenal. Okay, and 10 points in ES. I take that every day. I could take that every day. And by the way, it's 1030. Oh, okay. Awesome, Francis. You had a fantastic day. Francis, you had a fantastic day. Go enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, Shay, it's prime time trigger time, but right now this prime time trigger time is going to come as a reversal. Awesome, Francis. I'll see you tomorrow. Great job. Great job. Awesome, Ketter. Okay, guys, like I said, 750. Don't let it go below 750. We're locking in 50 points in NASDAQ. It's the only thing that we have to trail right now. It's due for a pullback. It's due for a pullback. Oh, Mark, you're at work. Oh. Of course it does, Mark. Of course it does. <laughs> of course your future looks great. We could do this all day, any day. Okay, 7.55 is where... NASDAQ is right now, we're gonna cut it at 750. 750 and we're out, we had a 754. Still holding on. Yes, for sure, Mark. We're waiting for you. Made a low of 752.25. And in fact, incredible recuperation in and why I'm here, incredible recuperation. All we do is trail. I have uh, my stop set in NASDAQ right now at 750. Anyone still in NASDAQ? Anyone still in NASDAQ with me? Jonathan, yay. Okay. 
Marcy, Linda, Mike. Yay. Are you guys keeping it for a swing? Or are you going to chicken out like me? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to give back profits. Like I'm telling you guys, I, I don't know what tomorrow brings. Okay. Take a look at what happened in oil, guys. 180 swish back up. 180 swish back up with the rotation. 180 swish with the rotation. Look at the slingshot right here. Tap right into the 40 and back up. Okay, so good news, guys. 50 is holding. We have 752. So we're just going to continue to trail it. Uh, it, it. Laurie, you still have ES in. Yes, use. Yes, lock it in. 3224. That's it, Laurie. Lock it in. 3224. Make sure you have those 10 points in your bag. Don't let it go. Don't let them go. All right, let's get back here to a five. Let's get here to a five as well. Yes, guys, for those of you that are still into ES and holding on, holding on, you're going to look. So like I mentioned before, we have targets uh, beyond 25. You see this dotted line. This is, again, a resistance spot. We need to see the print above it. So we need to see a print of 28 or so. If we see a print of 28, 28, 28, 25, we could see an expansion higher into the 30s and 32. And remember that 32 is going to be that magic wand that is going to hit ES and it's going to send it higher. Okay. It's the magic wand coming in from the weekly and the monthly, especially the monthly. Okay, so guys, for those of you that want to keep ES, lock in 10 points and then let it ride. Okay, let it ride. If you need help with management along the way, I'm here. Okay, and NASDAQ is still holding that 755, 25 new low level. Trail stop is 750. I don't want to see it below. Remember, we did not have a 10 o'clock reversal. The only reversal that we had is the 945. And we ran continuously for 945 until 1030. This is not common because usually at the beginning of the day, you're getting uh you're getting 15 minute uh 15 minute movement from uh from uh 1030 from 930 to 945 or 945 to 10 o'clock. From 10 o'clock to 10.30, that is when the range widens from, uh, from 10 o'clock to 10.30. And usually from 10.30, you have another trend that powers into the 11 and 11.15 or so. Um, or as we're getting very closer to the London session close. Okay. It was a totally really nice unexpected follow through that we had right now following that option expiration because the way we started uh, moving this morning, it was very choppy. Okay, it was very, very choppy. And you saw that NASDAQ moved back into the chop below zone, see the resistance and chop below zone, and it rotated. Here was very aggressive. I didn't want to take this very aggressively uh, to the upside because uh, definitely uh, at the time when NASDAQ performed this rotation, we had heavy selling into the Dow and heavy selling into Russell. Okay, T2, you're doing great. And we're just getting very closer into that 3230. Okay, we're still in NASDAQ. We're still in NASDAQ. Wow, new high in NASDAQ, new high in NASDAQ, new high in S&P. You guys are rocking it with S&P. So that becomes the trail stop at 750. Okay, further targets, further targets in NASDAQ. NASDAQ has just achieved, you can see it right here, the 70, uh, 74 to 75 zone. It just printed as 76.25. If we manage to take it above this spot, Above this spot, let me just uh, take my cursor here. Okay, let's see if it can do that. Let's see if it can do that. Uh, the next spot that we're going to be looking for 
is going to be 10,800. Let me mark it here. It's actually 801, okay? But we're gonna mark it right here. Okay, and then the next spot that we're gonna be looking at, brace for it, it's gonna be 850, very close to 850. It's actually 858. And these, uh, these spots, resistance, tar uh, are going to represent targets, okay? These are going to represent, obviously, targets. Here we go. Okay, so these are the spots that you're gonna be expecting for the afternoon. And we have the spots for ES, and this, is be this becomes high velocity above. Okay, and you're gonna look for a next target into the 3240 level. You can see that it's really close to this resistance spot right here. Okay, life is easy when we have our levels, right? And then let me do all the levels for NASI here. So you can see them right here. And then we have over this spot, in fact, over the last spot, I'm gonna put it a different color here because it's gonna be high velocity spot again. I'm just gonna go higher. And this is gonna take us to 11,000. Okay, 11,000 is gonna be the last target and I'm going to update you on trails so far 750 is holding so we're keeping the 750 trail even if you want to keep it as a swing all right you could take a snapshot okay you could take a snapshot of these levels right here uh, let me see, let me put it on the 15 for you so you can see it, okay. Okay. Um, okay, Tom, if you click on the performance portfolio, it's posted right there. Click on the performance portfolio and the trades are automatically posted in there. It has not achieved that spot yet, so you still have plenty of time. Amy, are you still in GC? I am too in GC. Okay, let it go. Let it go, GC. Does, GC does not have a trail yet. GC does not have a trail yet. Okay, GC does not. We're, we're in at 17 from last week, and we're just a very few points above. GC needs to get well over this 20 spot and close this four hours. So going into one o'clock, you want to see it close into 1820s. And then we need to break that 25. 25 is going to be our next target into it. 25. Hey, Dan. No, 750 has not changed. 750 is the trail stop on everything in NASDAQ. You want to make sure that it maintains the momentum. If you listen, 
if uh, if you still want to keep it because it's having take a look at the five minute structure see the five minute structure we hit this high right here look at the one common denominator is 50 so we're holding the 50 spot support what a beautiful level see the dotted line right here right into our pivot and uh we are having a decision and decision into the highs is definitely poised to pull back it's definitely poised to pull back i'm not gonna let it go below 50. okay not letting it go below 50. see it tapped into the 52 again into that dotted line right here and it's bringing back up okay so the next time around if it's not gonna hold this area i have a hard stop into that spot into the 750. i'm not gonna let it go below that okay uh, let me update you guys on the m and &E SMP, on the neutral stop into the m and &E SMP. Uh, it's still 24. It's still 24. Uh, you can use 2450 if you wish, but it's still 24 to 2450. 24 to 2450. Okay, Tom, let me know uh, if you found it. If you found the spot where you need to look, it's in the real time performance portfolio. Okay, T2, you're out 2650. Good job. Fantastic. Well, you did better than me. You got two and a half more points. Uh, good, Tom. Awesome. Okay, now remember what I said. We had a full blast into all of these indices, we did not have a 10 o'clock reversal. Um, what we can expect going right now between 1030 and 1045 is that if we're not getting any kind of pullbacks, we can expect ranges. If these ranges are going to be tested and if we're going to break out above these ranges, then that is going to be a continuation of the momentum from 1030 onwards. So we can expect the momentum to continue pretty much until 11 o'clock or 1115, which at 1115, uh, we're getting very close. We're actually going to be 15 minutes uh, from uh, the London session close, and that is going to be the next gyration point into the market. But right now, as long as these highs are going to hold and the price is going to maintain the ranges and ES and NASDAQ and also into the Dow and Russell, we can expect for the price to um, um, actually pop higher spring higher uh, over these highs. So right now, um, obviously NASDAQ needs to see some prints over 75, 75.25 is what's gonna uh, create the next pressure point into the 780. And beyond 780, we're gonna head on uh, into the 800. And those are gonna be the next spots. <clears throat> yes, the portfolio 2020, but it's not the futures one, Ta. It's the swing one. It's it's in the email, in that swing email. Okay, so we're still respecting the 750 spot in NASDAQ. See the momentum has slowed down, the volume went down slightly here. <clears throat> so remember the trail spot is still 24, 2450 in ES. So you're still gonna be able to lock in those 10 points. NASDAQ is still holding. NASDAQ actually has, you know, on the 15 minute has a doji that got, gets me a little bit concerned here. So yeah, 750, if we break 750, more likely to pull back into, uh, into this 36 level and look how elevated we are from the 10 EMA right here. So yeah, pullback is imminent if we don't hold this 50. So you don't wanna, 
mess around with that. Yay, awesome. Jonathan, good job. Good job. Okay, holding my breath, 7.50. Is it gonna hold it? It doesn't look like it's gonna hold it. I think he wants to do the doji pull back here. See, indecision candle. It's gonna wanna do the pull back and I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> Totally fine with it, right? Okay, I am officially, officially out right now. 750 trails out. So NASDAQ trails out. Ta-da! And I'm out. I'm out. Now, here is what I can see happen into the for the rest of this trading session. Okay, here's what I say. Look at their spots, guys. Wow, to the T, to the T. Okay, so we had a really fun blast. I didn't want to keep it for the swing because of the very wide stop. Typically, when I uh, when I like to trade indices, I like to take them. Uh, more on a four hour or hourly based than a daily based. And especially the daily when it's like, you know, super uh, choppy in terms of support zones. And so it has gradual support. So it has a nice structure of higher highs and higher lows. But if you try to really, uh, you know, I really don't want to give it that 500 stop. Okay. I don't want to keep it. So that 400 or 500 stop, I don't want to give that. Okay, I don't want to give that. Okay, so let's take a quick look and let's see what we can expect for the afternoon trading session in case you guys want to still trade for the rest of the day today. Like I said, I am totally out. So I'm not going to be trading. I have two trades. Fantastic. We really made a lot of money on them. So I'm done. All right, let's talk about the structure. And this is, guys, going to be the wrap of the day today. Okay. Uh, let's take a quick look and let me just bring my cursor. Good job, Linda. Awesome. Good job. Okay. So here's what I will be expecting uh, into the next few minutes or so. Uh, if we're not going to consolidate into these highs, and I'm talking about NASDAQ first. If we're not going to consolidate into these highs, this doji is, got, is definitely showing me a lot of indecision. I had a trail stop into 50, punched me out. And then, you know, I think that if we're going to get doji down, we can expect a pullback that can uh, potentially come back into this, uh, uh, into this support spot if it has extreme strength. Or it can come back down into these are uh, these are the two or three possibilities. Or it can come back down into this spot right here into this uh, confluence area. You see this confluence area coming from this resistance spot. Okay, that now it's going to become support, and we can expect pullbacks from these levels. So if we're going to get a pullback and a rotation off of this first resistance spot, we can see the price extend higher even above obviously with a target of one over 75 and then target two going into the 800 and then if we get a, a little bit of a more of a pullback trendy pullback trendy pullback uh watch for rotation into this 10 ema and then we can see a progression obviously higher into the same targets that we see here. This is target one, this is going to be target two. And like I said, we do have uh, overhead targets as well. And then if we get a much more meaningful pullback in the afternoon trading session, if we see it uh, back into the 70s, 670 area, this is the next spot for the uh, correction and we can see the price advance higher. So these are the three spots where you can expect 
uh, pullbacks in the afternoon trading session. So the first spot is going to be into the 36 right here. The, sec the second spot that you're going to experience a pullback is going to be into the 710 zone. And the third one is going to be into the 670 zone. So these are the three layers that need to hold the price for it to respect the pattern and continue with the higher highs with the rising highs and rising bottoms. Now, uh, let's take a quick look on the 15 minute structure into the mini SMP and let's see if we can identify further trades. Obviously, we have achieved the first area of resistance. This is a super duper confluence area. You see the dotted line, you see the 25, bam, this is a big, big whammy to get right into the spot. If we get pullbacks right into the 20s, uh, the next pullback zone can be well, I would say into the uh, 3210 CR markings right here. I don't want the pullback to be below this uh, 200 SMA on the 15 minute. If we get below this, then watch out below, it's gonna complete the pullback into the 3200 or even more. Now from these spots, we're expecting rotations back to the upside from the 3220 from the 3210 to 3212 area back up and from this 200 SMA back, uh, obviously back up. So uh, bottom line is that if we're going to get consolidations and these are cons consolidations right here into these spots uh, that we have discussed uh, uh, earlier from that doji high low. Uh, so this is the doji high low right here as well on the 15 minute. So if this is going to happen, any break of the 32.20 can send the price higher, definitely, if we get a break over this. So if this area is gonna hold, bam, this is gonna go higher. Over 75, you can expect on a print of 75, you can expect NASDAQ to continue higher. The only index that I totally do not like, and in fact, there are two indices right now, uh, is definitely the Dow, which is weaker, it's under pressure. Remember that as we're going into the, um, afternoon trading session, excuse me, we are expecting IBM to report earnings. Let me just replace this quickly with IBM. So after the market closes, IBM will report, what did I do? IBM, okay, IBM. Okay, here's the IBM and continuing a little bit higher here. So IBM uh, let me see it on the 15 minute structure. Yeah, my IBM is sideways into earnings, okay? So it's waiting earnings. And let's take a quick look here at YM to see it in sync, okay? So yeah, IBM 15 minute still sideways, did the 15 minute rotation back into the prior high. Remember, this is what IBM is going to follow uh, into earnings. If IBM is gonna start pushing uh, and having a little bit of pressure to the upside, then definitely we're gonna see a rise uh, in the Dow uh, price as well. Uh, another big component of YM is Boeing and Boeing is just executing this 15 minute rotation and got into resistance here. And if it's going to start dissolving 74.50, so if we see a print over 174.50, uh, we're going to see a short squeeze that is going to take place into the 175.41, which may create more pressure into the Dow. Now, another stock that is also a Dow component that you can see the Dow here and you can see the stocks here that I'm uh, going through. And this is Disney. So Disney, very nice 15 minute rotation back into resistance right here. And that's one of the reasons why the price is holding into the Dow. So we're just taking it one at a time. And then again, a little bit of turbulence in the beautiful world of Walmart, WNT. Uh, Walmart is uh, actually a little bit sideways towards weaker today. If, uh, uh, if uh, Walmart is going to start trading above 133, then we can start uh, seeing a bit more pressure into, uh, into the Dow. Uh, JP Morgan was downgraded today. So um, I see a lot of traders that saw the downgrade as a buy opportunity off of the 10 a.m. bottom and we're getting a lift here. So if today, and I also like the daily structure of it, take a look at the daily structure right here. Very interesting, back into the 10 EMA. If we're gonna have like really shallow price action activity contained into JP Morgan throughout the trading session today, tomorrow we may have a rotation and we could see some more money being poured into JP Morgan stock, which means that it can create more pressure into our Dow, right? So it may take Dow a little bit higher. 
So um, uh, to wrap it up with, uh, with YM, I'm gonna take it onto our bigger structure right here. It's not gonna go anywhere unless it trades over 600 today. So today you wanna see 600 for the high velocity move and any pullback buy from 600 and 620 is gonna send the price into the 725. 725 is gonna be that big release to the upside uh, that can potentially unleash lots of massive buying power getting uh the price into the 800 850 and then over 850 we're gonna open the doors wide open to 27,000. so it's gonna trade in these segments right here last but not least gc and this is uh, uh this is the trade that we have on gc like i said from the daily structure is still a massive range bound action where we still have support below the 90 you can see it right here 89.2 which is obviously below eight we below 89 it's very jittery. Uh, remember, the most important thing in GC is to start closing uh, 1820, and that is into 1 p.m. So we have a couple of hours until uh, until that uh, happens. So that's what we need to see uh, into. I'm going to put it here on the four hour chart um, into one o'clock. Uh, and this is the swing trade we initiated. I think it was last Monday when we initiated the trade, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I'm still in. So I'm I'm just uh, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, trailing for GC when the time comes for a trail because for the one week we had nothing to trail so far because it has been range bound. But if we're gonna get an explosive move over 25, uh, then uh, we're gonna start you know doing some diligent trailing. So we don't want to see it, and we want to take partial profits on it, obviously. All right, let's take get rid of these drawings on our charts. And you can see that we have started the progression right now for these pullbacks. And uh, uh, the Dow here, okay, let me take it to the 15 minute again. The Dow here is stuck into this uh, into this 20 SMA, okay? So right now, so keep in mind for those of you that still want some trades into the afternoon trading session, uh, look for a break over this, no, I'm going to stick with my opinion here. No, I, I don't want to. No, this is going to be a very problematic trade. Okay, very problematic trade. It's very choppy, very wishy-washy. I don't want you guys in. Same with Russell. Okay, Russell is going to be bullish above uh, 69.9. This is more of a swing. This is resistance. Uh, moderately bullish above. And this can, uh, this can send the price. So any close of a 15 minute candle or uh, any close of one hour above the 70 area will propel it higher for about 10 points. So this could be, uh, this could be a squeeze right here from 70 to 80, about 10 points. Uh, but you need to see it above 70. And if you see it now, let's say in the next 15 minutes above 70, uh, and this, we're outside of the prime trigger times, by the way, with all these indices. But if it should do that, then your stop should be obviously you have the option of even uh, either keeping the stop below the New York trading session low or this prior uh, this prior fifteen minute pivot low. Okay. Um, any other questions, Lori? You want to see silver? Let's uh, replace Russell with silver here. Okay. Uh, silver continuing higher. I don't know. You, I think you asked me last week about silver. Uh, are you still in? So you're still in because we still have, uh, we still have these. Um, okay, here they are. <clears throat> so you're trading into a target one right here into the $20. Okay. And other than that, it has a tradable void all the way to $22. So from $20 to $22. Is definitely a lot stronger than gold right now. So, Lori, if you're still in, you know, over twenty dollars, it can expand into the uh, twenty-two dollars. But remember, you know, you know, I think profit taking is going to start coming at twenty-one eighty or so. But this is a big, big tradable void right here uh, into the next uh, uh, into the next projection into the two sixty-one point eight percent. So, I hope this helps. Uh, let me know. Yeah, let me know if you need anything else from it. Okay. Uh, and guys, we're done. We're pretty much done for the day. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm done for the day. Not going to do anything else. So uh, Amy, Myrna Long again. Myrna's very choppy. Okay. I am looking at Myrna. I think Myrna can be a buying opportunity, but right now became extremely volatile. So within the last today so today let me just put it on the one hour okay uh so within the last 
you know, um, a couple of hours, you can see that it made a high 99.70 April market. Uh, it topped into that pivot right here. Take a look at the pivot, very technical trading in Myrna, by the way. Um, and uh, I'm seeing this uh, one hour inside bar here. I'm not really sure how to tackle this because I think this is gonna be a very tight, you know, a uh, very tight formation for it to uh, to actually take a look at this inside candle. Uh, it has a lot of resistance right now into the 90, so it definitely needs to trade above the 90. Uh, I do not see an entry opportunity right now for Myrna, and it definitely needs to quiet down um, because right now, if you want to take a trade, you will you would have to take it over ninety dollars and have to stop somewhere into the seventy six to seventy eight dollars, which is huge. So I'm not going to give it that uh, that much of a risk. I think that we had a great run in it, forty percent. We made forty percent. Listen, guys, hedge funds typically make from anywhere from three percent to a maximum of twenty percent per year. And that is per year. You hope, I hope you do realize the value of the swing service that is providing literally hundreds of percents, hundreds of percent. So in Myrna, we made 40%. In uh, SPCE, we're going to, uh, yeah, so I'm going to take a look at SPCE, SPCE right now. And SPC right here, this is still in place. So we have not uh, uh, we have not done anything with it, but let's try to play it safe. And this is my motto. If I see a trade and if I see a parameter, I take it. If I don't see a parameter, definitely I'm not going to take it, okay? Um, so let's not play with Myrna right now. And uh, let's, See, let's focus. We have a plethora of other trading ideas. I think there were 16 or 17 trades, 15 or 15, 16 or 17 trades that we released last night. And uh, definitely we still, we have a plethora of trading ideas and other uh, names to trade. And plus we're going to focus more and more and more and more and more uh, into these uh, stocks that have already reported earnings. Okay, Johnson & Johnson, yes, Johnson & Johnson is still in play. So Johnson & Johnson is just like Myrna, you need to wait uh, for, uh, you know, you need to wait for, uh, for, for the pattern to start working. And we have, uh, we've had a really nice pullback here with an inside bar and it started to go from this inside and out. We're back into the 150, now 150 is resistance. And you know what? It still has the potential to get back into the 155 and 157. So all we need to do is wait. This is what trading is all about. Okay, M, uh, no, it's J-M-I-A. Okay, J-M-I-A. Okay, J-M-I-A. Let's take a look very quickly right now. Monthly chart. Nice rotation volume-wise on the monthly. Good. Right now into resistance. Uh, let's check it, take a look at the weekly. We See, this was the breakout point right here. We're very late into this game, uh, very late into this game. I love the name. I wish you would have brought it up earlier, Aaron. Yeah, I it did not hit my radar in any way. Um, wow, this is really nice. Old time frames are really nice and to date, I'm curious why it didn't pop on my scanner because it has really huge volume, 2.8 million shares traded. Wow. Aaron, if you have another stock that you're, you have on watch, please, please, pre-market, give it a go. Okay, please give it a go. Give it a go. No, just post it in the room. Aaron, just post it in the room because I don't check the email while I'm in the room, okay? I don't check the email. But oh my goodness, guys, Aaron, wow, wowee. This, this was amazing. It was over $8. You see this range? And I'm like the range queen because I love to trade these bases. Stop into $7. So it had a $1 stop, right? This, this was your target one. You see it right here? This was your target one, okay? Uh, target two into these highs, target three into this high of 984. Nine dollars uh, would be target three or so, and beyond nine dollars, it can start expanding into nine thirty, nine dollars and thirty cents, and that is from the weekly. Okay, here it is. 
9.30 and then 9.60, 9.50, 9.50, 9.60. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, Aaron, you got the $7. Jealous. Totally beautiful. Congratulations. You had, you have a beautiful trade on your hands. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What else do we have here? Okay. AMD. Okay. AMD. Okay. So AMD definitely pushing higher. I still have some lots of AMD. Uh, so the trade is still open for me. Uh, and uh, the most important part right now is the weekly because the weekly, if it's going to start trading, if it's going to start trading above this 58, it's going to go, uh, it's going to go to 60 very, very soon. So that's my profit target on it. Uh, AMD into the 60s and beyond 60. I'm looking for actually, I'm looking for a breakout above 60 because you can see the weekly structure still is uh, still has a very good formation. So over 59, this is gonna push it into 60. Okay, so this is very, very nice right here. Very, very nice. All right, let's get back to the drawing board here in NASDAQ. In NASDAQ, we have the prior doji, which was set up between uh, 10.45 and uh, 11 o'clock. And right now we're getting close to a 15 minute rotation. And in fact, we could see some squeezes here. So I'm not gonna post any trades, I'm done for the day, but I wanna give you some ideas to see the price action follow through from our signals. So uh, this is going to be the Dow. If the Dow is gonna trade over 525, it's gonna run into 550, not a lot of room. And in terms of risk to reward ratio, it kind of sucks because it's gonna be like one R. Uh, but it has a lot of pressure into this 200 SMA, into the 550, into this prior high. So it has a lot of resistance. And like I said, it's still going to have a lot of resistance. But if you decide to take the trade over 525, make sure that you take massive profits into 550, put the stop and break even. And if you get another pop, look for continuation into 580. And then look for continuation to 600. And 600 is going to be that high velocity move above, which is going to project it higher into the next target of 760 or more. And in fact, this is gonna ultimately wanna push it above that all of those resistance points that we have all the way into 600, into the 700 and 724. Uh, for NASDAQ, because it's nearing a rotation right now, you can see very shallow pullback. In fact, five minute very shallow pullback as well, five minute holding. So that means that uh, for the rest of the morning, if you get a print of 760, 71, 771, uh, and with a stop below this 36. So you're gonna, uh, 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 you're gonna use a stop of 36 right here, okay? So 36 remains the stop. Look, this is, a, uh, this is the spot right now uh, for the new stop. And we talked about this, right? And we have the pullback, but this is going to be your trade. So if it trades over uh, 71, or if you get at a late entry over 75, you can't look for a continuation higher back into the 10,800. Easy peasy, right? You have the stop, you have the entry, you have the target. The, these are all the elements that you need. There's one that is missing, and that is the position sizing. So look at your account size, look very deeply in your account size and say, hey, what, am I, what kind of trader am I? Am I risking the 1%? Am I risking the 2%? Am I risking the 3%? What kind of trader? Remember, the more you risk, <laughs> if you're hitting a rough patch, and if you have multiple stop outs, like three or four or five, if you're using that 3% or 5% or even more, <clears throat> you're, going to, uh, you're going to hit that, um, uh, you're going to hit that spot where you can blow up your account. So I usually risk very, very less on all the trades, which gives me a lot more focus uh, and uh, stress-free area. Okay, uh, ABR, ABR. Let's put ABR right here for Aaron. Uh, ABR, I'm not sure I ever traded ABR. Okay, ABR, let me take, oh yeah, I could see it. ABR, low volume, daily, 477. Um, th this is for dividend, Aaron. Okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. this week, this week to me, and this week, this is an inside candle right here. So if this week trades over $8 and 83 cents, 
uh, with a stop, you need to stop seven below 7.30, it could start pushing higher <clears throat> into the 9.20 and 10 bucks area. Those are your entries, stops, and targets in ABR. Okay. All right, everyone, this is a wrap. It's 11.15. We are 15 minutes into the London session close. I am done for today. We had a fantastic morning. Let me know if you need any help so far. And this is a wrap. Like I said, the last trade that we're looking at is NASDAQ. I am not going to take the trade since I'm done for the morning, but there it is. Okay, this is a very nice shallow pullback and it's in sync with what, he, what we have mentioned before. Okay, it's in sync with uh, what we have mentioned. Alex, definitely see you tomorrow. Yeah, we're excited for a brand new trading session. And remember that this is the prime season to trade within these six to eight weeks. These are going to be the most volatile, um, let's say, uh, and generous types of moves that we are going to experience in the market because we are in full swing earning season and stocks are the ones that are fueling our indices. Uh, and one more thing, don't forget about the stimulus, right? They're helping the economy. So we should be in sync with uh, all, everything that is going on. Okay, so by the way, right now, take a look at one last look at these indices. You have a nice doji bar here. And again, if you're wanting to be a little bit more aggressive, you have want to have a tighter stop, 511 to 512 is going to be your entry. I would say 512 entry nym the stop needs to be 480 you're gonna look for first target into the 25 and over 25 like i said look for velocity and the push with the profit target into the 50 so therefore you have the entry the stop and the target nym also in es you can see the 15 minute rotation happening right now so Secondary entry can be 32, uh, 32.26 by 32.22, and you have a target into the 30 and 33. There you have it, entry, stop, and target. And like I said, for Russell, I'm just gonna leave Russell alone. Russell, remember, we talked about it for the swing opportunity last week. I know some of you guys are still in it. So um, remember, it needs, to, uh, it needs to digest this purple zone before it punches higher. Uh, we talked about it earlier, so we really need to see uh, the price over 70 before it wakes up to do anything. And keep an eye on oil because happy oil is happy S&P and happy market, okay? Here's your target right here into the 780. Look for 780, 800 into NASDAQ. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining the trading room today. I hope everyone had a fantastic day today. I will see you guys tomorrow with a brand new session. And this is a wrap. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. We have a nice, we have a really nice profitable trading day. Bye-bye.